welcome back to our Mark IV build. Today we're going to be doing the rear end and rear suspension install. Uh, first things first, we're going to have to go ahead and put the rear brakes onto our rear end assembly. Uh, here we have the optional Mosier rear end with our optional 11.65 inch rear brake package. First thing we're going to do is take the cover off the rear end and we're going to spin the differential chuck until we can find the 8mm bolt that holds in the retaining pin so we can remove the C-clips. We'll pull that bolt out, remove the pin, and then you're going to want to go ahead and push the axle in towards the middle and pull the C-clip out with a magnet or with a pair of pliers. Once that's set, you'll be able to remove the axle and we can then install the brake caliper brackets, making sure to orient them correctly according to the instructions. You'll go ahead, tighten up the four bolts, and then take the axle, slide that back into place, and repeat the process on the opposite side. Once that's all set, we'll go ahead and install the C-clips once again, pulling the axles out and making sure to retain them. Then we'll go ahead and install the keeper pin and put the 8mm bolt back in place. Once that's set, you can go ahead and fill the rear end with fluid now if you wish, and make sure you refer to the manual to determine the type of fluid and the amount to put in. All right guys, with that all set, we're now gonna go ahead and install the rest of the brakes. We'll take the rotor, slide that onto the axle, and if you have a lug nut handy, slide that on to keep it in place. Once that's set, we're gonna go ahead and take our brake pads, install them into the brake caliper, and then take the brake caliper and assemble that onto the brake caliper bracket. Now take note that with a Mosier rear end, you will need to use the included spacers in between the caliper and the caliper bracket in order to make sure that the caliper is centered over the rotor. With the brakes now installed, we're gonna go ahead and put our traction lock brackets into place. We'll grab the right and left hand sides, slide those over the factory lower control arm mounts, and then go ahead, take our two bolts, slide them in from either side, and tighten those up. We'll wait for now to put the rear one in as we need to have the rear end in place to put the shock through to tighten that down. With the rear end now all set, we have to prepare the lower control arms to get the rear end ready to go into the chassis. We'll take those out of the box taking note that we want to install them with the grease fittings facing the ground so we can service those down the road. Once that's set, you can find the hardware to bolt them onto the frame, put the bolts through, and go ahead and tighten them up on the frame side. Before we install the rear end, we're going to go ahead and need to drill the half inch hole into the Panhard bar frame mount onto the back of the four inch tube. Once that's drilled through, you can go ahead and remove the four bolts holding the Panhard bar frame mount into the frame and set that aside for now.
Now with that all set, we're ready to install the rear end. We need to have two guys minimum to help install this, so we brought Tony on board to give me a hand putting it in. You'll want to lift it onto a floor jack, making sure that you balance it out, and then jack it up to the point where you can install the lower control arms onto the traction lock brackets. You'll go ahead and slide those into place and put the bolts in to help stabilize the rear end. Once that's all set, you'll want to put a jack stand under the front pinion of the rear end to help stabilize it until we get it bolted in more securely. Now with that set, we can go ahead and install the shocks onto the traction lock brackets. We'll want to find the necessary hardware and spacers, taking note as to where they're supposed to go. In this case on the bottom, we'll have the very small spacer shim at the back, and we'll have the larger aluminum spacer at the front. You'll go ahead and pass the bolt through the traction lock bracket and into the factory lower control arm bracket, bolting it all into place. We're going to go ahead and assemble the upper control arm and get that installed. We'll want to first take note that there is a left hand and right hand threaded heim joint included in the kit to make adjusting easier. So you'll want to make sure to figure out which one needs to go what direction before you install it. Once that's set, we'll put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads and go ahead and thread those into the upper control arm. From there, we're going to install the upper control arm onto the frame and rear end. Again, using the spacers provided in the kit to make sure the heim joint is centered in both brackets. Go ahead and install the bolts and tighten those down. With that all in place, we can now raise the rear end up in order to get the shocks to line up with the frame mount. Go ahead and take the remaining spacers for the shock, set one on either side, pass the bolt through and go ahead and tighten that down on each one. Once that's good to go, we're going to go ahead and take the pan hard bar frame mount and bolt that back into place. Take note that the leg of the mount that we drilled earlier is going to pass underneath the rear end, so you may have to jack it up a little bit higher than what we have it currently set at to get that in place. Go ahead and put those five bolts in and tighten them up. With that set, we're going to now need to assemble the pan hard bar itself. This is set up very similar to the upper control arm, as there is a left and right handed thread heim joint. You'll need to identify which one goes in which side, and then again, put some anti-seize on the threads and thread those into place. Once that's set, we'll go ahead and attach the pan hard bar to the frame mount and to the passenger side traction lock bracket. Again, using the spacers supplied to go ahead and make sure everything's centered correctly. Once the pan hard bar is installed, we're going to go ahead and leave it unadjusted until we go ahead and do our final alignment down the road. With all these parts installed, the rear end's now ready to go. You can feel free to remove the floor jack and go ahead and clean up your tools, and we'll see you next time.